Hey guys, MF West here, and today we have an Unholy DK uh, PvP commentary. Now, I know the season has just started, and um, as most likely all of you are doing, you're climbing, you're trying to get the highest rating that you can this week, which is always particularly hard given the first week of the season, uh, just because of all the multi-rank one glads and just everyone trying to get, um, well, just doing arenas. So my goal this week, uh, like it always is in the first week of the season is to get 1800 um, that will reward you with a 465 uh, piece from the PvP cache it's very important to do that and your PvE chest now I don't want to drag on too much I just want to get straight into the commentary so um, this is not going to be a guide I'm just going I'm still learning about corruption abilities and um, I'm testing some things to see what I think would be good so by no means can I give you guys a full-on guide but I will show you what I'm currently running at the moment, so this is my gear. Um, pause it if you'd like. Uh, the only corruption piece I'll be using is a rank three mind flay, which is very strong, which I will discuss now. Um, and yeah, pretty much the rest of the gear I got from heroic and normal um, socket a piece there. This is from heroic, and um, pretty much using the same Azrite besides the shoulders I got from Carapace. So yeah, nothing straightforward, nothing too different there. Uh, talents now. <clears throat> I will go in depth as to why I've chosen this set, but I am testing out all serve. I do like to take Infected Claws uh, against um, Holy Paladins, but generally, and Bursting Sores, I'm basically taking that because of the change, the hotfix that was done to it. Not going to go into too much depth, but basically, um, with the new synergy between Bursting Sores and Necrotic Strike, uh, I will be using that instead of Ebon Fever. I'll go into that in the guide. Uh, Spell Eater, Pestilence, nothing too much has changed there. Now, now that we have three miners, I'm using Concentrated Flame, uh, Crucible of Flame, sorry, as my major essence. A lot of people are trying Vision of Perfection, which has a chance to spawn more Magus. I definitely think that's a great idea as well. Uh, it's very tempting, and I'm going to test it out, like I said. Uh, Conflict and Strife Miner. Memory of Lucid Dreams and Essence of the Focusing Ira. So pretty it's pretty standard there, guys. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. I will talk about corruption in the video, so let's go. All right, here we are. We're playing. I'm playing with the Holy Paladin now. The people that I'm playing with, the healers are complete randoms. Uh, I don't have any. Didn't really have any healers to to invite to this. So most of the games, which was really awesome, was actually against Oceanic players. Um, a lot of US players as well. Um, but pretty much Arms Warrior and Mistweaver. Now I'm pretty much going to be keeping this warrior locked down. I don't want him cleaving and everything on my players, on my team members. So um, they cocoon there with all my cooldowns popped, which is pretty standard. And I'm just going to make this monk's life a living hell uh ensuring so he has this thing where he has his, his port upstairs and whenever i turn to look at him he just like dives off so yeah nothing too crazy there um yeah honestly just going to abuse the fact that i have like four stops um and uh you'll just see most now good mist weavers wouldn't even let me wouldn't even be in range uh of my kicks because my pet kick actually can be outranged by their healing range but this guy stays a bit too close sometimes and uh, i'm just able to get out more pressure on the warrior now a big thing that i want to address is corruption so there you see the corruption effect i am currently in this video i'll be rank one corruption so 29 corruption uh when that happens um, these circles will spawn. If you stay in the circle, the eye in the middle will do magic damage. If you stay in the full duration, it'll do about 30% of your HP, which is pretty ridiculous. So if you get stunned in one, you're in serious trouble. Now, the legendary cape on use effects uh, negates all corruption effects on you. So, yeah. Now, he has Twilight Devastation, which is that massive purple bean. It's one of the corruption effects. Very good and overpowered at the moment in Arena. I'm not going to go over how overpowered corruption is. Uh, I'll just talk about each effect as I see it. So, my thing is Mind Flay, which spawns tentacles, and Jesus, they do so much damage. If one tentacle spawns, I think he'll do about 20% of his HP by itself. So, that's busted. Um, gonna strangulate him here and get some pretty good pressure. He hasn't got Cocoon for like another 30 seconds. Pretty good ring by him there. Um, but the warrior can't connect my Holy Paladin, so he's back on me, which is exactly what I want. I want to keep the warrior and the monk together at all times close together so i can kick there so i pet kicked there into a mind freeze so he's been kicked twice 
he fears me off there to try and stop me, but he can't even connect with my Paladin, so this is exactly where I want him to be. I probably should have gripped there, but Paladin just walks away. Um, now, so now that Cocoon's been used, this is the next kill window, and I'm pretty sure we close it out before the next Cocoon. Uh, Monk is pretty tapped on mana, below half a, uh, mana there as well, so yeah, just staying, like just making sure that he can't connect with my Paladin as much as I can. Keeping Arms Warriors changed, chained of ice all the time. Grip him down, stun, this is huge. Now, then, and the Paladin sees my uh, Asphyxia on the on the Monk, so he stuns the Warrior, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, down he goes pretty much here with IBF, and he just can't keep him up there. So honestly, just kind of out-pressured and damaged him. Uh, he didn't really connect with my healer that much, and that's why uh, they lost there. So just make the Warrior's life really a living hell. And um, yeah. All right, so now I've got a... Um, typical Asa Rogue Disc Priest comp. Um, here I'm pretty much going to be sitting on the Rogue. Now, I need to show you guys some of the damage that can happen from uh, <laughs> Mind Flay. So I stunned the, the, the Priest here. Rogue's in a very bad position here. He's got all his defenses available, but he's lost from his healer, which is great. So I'm going to make sure that I try and stop the next heal on him. Uh, I Mind Flay him and I actually swap to the Priest here a little bit. I get feared, uh, which I, I believe breaks or I trinket, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I actually should have probably stayed on, on the on the rogue here. But I get some decent pressure out on the rogue. Enough for him to come back to me and kidney me, which is great. Amazing ring of peace there on the kidney. Very impressive. Now staying rogue here and making sure that I kick uh, hit that penance and then just keeping up pressure. To be honest, uh, I didn't need to grip that heal. And now I have a mind flay spawning onto the rogue, uh, which is awesome. And that actually triggers, uh, what's that called? What's that ability called? Um... I forget the name of it now. Holy moly, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, but yeah, Rapture, that's right. It gives him a huge shield. So pretty much tapped for most defensive cooldowns besides pain stuff here. So yeah, this sticking up on the rogue here. Now look, he actually loses his healer. So I stun and grip him behind Loz, which is amazing, which triggers the priest to actually come. Now there, I should have actually changed of iced the healer because of his positioning. I could have had more uptime on the rogue. He gets sapped here and I, get, I sit a full blind, unfortunately, because I used my trinket before. Uh, great ring on the monks, so the rogue can't connect, but he does cloak actually to try and get onto the monk, which is huge because now the cloak's down. Uh, it's pretty much over, to be honest. They've got no pressure. Um, he only has Vendetta up in 50 seconds, and we're going to win the game before that window even pops up. So, yeah, rogues are in a bit too ham using defensive cooldowns unnecessarily, uh, and that's going to cost him the game. So, empowered dark transformation. I'm going to kick the next priest heal as soon as it comes out. Wailing on this rogue here. Um, just looking for that next kick. Boom, there it goes. Kicked it. Grip back the rogue. Full length grip there. And down he goes. Drink at that and done. And just before, as, uh, just before he actually kidnapped me, I got, I got the asphyxia on, off on the priest, which is massive. Uh, I'm going to jump like halfway into this game. It's a Mistweaver uh, Feral Druid comp. Now, against Feral Druids, you cannot, uh, <laughs> you pretty much can't run them down. They are always going to run down your healer in most instances because their mobility is disgusting. They can actually connect with a Mistweaver Monk like the entire time. Um, so I'm pretty much going to be gunning for this Mistweaver Monk. And this, to be honest, a good Feral Druid will be rooting you like almost on every cl clear club. Clear prop cast. I'm not sure the instant entangling roots that he gets. Uh, this guy's trying to drink because he's very low on mana. Now I need to show you how broken the corruption is in Arena um, and how important it is to get one of the three biz corruption traits. So get a stun here, get some massive damage. He actually gets a nice leg sweep off, but I have grip available. Grip him back, and I'm getting damage on both of them because the, the monk's low on mana. A mind flay spawns and, and it's just wailing down this feral druid. Look at that, that's one mind flay, not even two, and he's already that low. Has to go bear and cocoon just for him. So uh, eventually, I'm actually going to kill the feral druid because the monk hasn't got any cooldowns left. That was cocoon. Um, but the, the, the Feral Druid is going to make it annoying for me. Uh, really good uh, uh, ring there to stop him from actually drinking. There is the, the Entangling Roots, but it gets insta-dispelled by my healer. I'm going to IBF here to stay offensive, and then Wraith Walk as soon as I get out of it. Now, one, this is one tentacle on the, on the Druid, okay? So two tentacles on the Druid. Watch his HP. I'm not really doing that much damage. And then another one spawns, and he just dies. Like, that is... I'm going to rewind that, guys. So, this is ridiculous. I, uh, there's one, which already is chunking him, right? He's doing shadow damage every second, and then a second spawns, the first one dies, and then another one spawns. Absolutely ridiculous, and he just goes down. There is nothing you can do. Uh, that is that is hilarious. Um, 
why and this 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 monks of vindictive gladiator i don't even know why this is a thing to be honest now this is a clip guys from uh the following game again highlighting how op silly corruption is all right so this is the start of the game this is 10 seconds into the game it just started uh i'm gonna pretty much do the full combo now to be honest the dk ams is like straight away um either Maybe he saw the tentacle, but it's a bit ridiculous to AMS that fast. Um, cool, you can negate my my actual like offensive abilities, but that early is a bit silly. So as one tentacle on him right now, okay, uh, I still have Dark Transformation and Frenzy and Apocalypse left. There goes Apocalypse. Um, that's everything. And now watch his HP. Watch his HP. I grip the Paladin in here and stun him. And this Paladin is greedy and doesn't shrink it. Now watch what happens to this Death Knight. That's two tentacles on him right now, and he just drops guys two tentacle damage it's like the old i did 50k damage i don't know obviously that's a bit inflated from his pets but wow um yeah so these two clips just perfectly highlight how ridiculous this is um this is a really good game against a rogue holy paladin now this rogue plays very well uh, i tried my best to peel and i will i will point out some mistakes i do so i try to grip that kidney off the initially do massive massive damage in here on the rogue almost dies um has to dedicate um, the Paladin is pumping out heals right now. Uh, we get wings, which is good, but I, I wanted evasion. I wanted cloak, or, but he didn't. The rogue managed to hold on to it, which is really impressive. That was Vendetta now. So now I'm just making this guy's life a living hell. I trinket the blind. I honestly didn't need to. The drill was in a position where he could have got away, but Shadow Step was available, so I was scared. All right, here it dedicates cloak because how low he is, and um, now I just need to make sure that I swap to the Paladin while he cloaks. Uh, I'm saving grip in case he tries to connect with the uh, with my druid. Trinkets my asphyxiate there. Um, he actually does a weird ass step there. So he starts to step to the druid, but the druid must have been midair when he pressed it, and he just fell to the ground. So that's huge. Now I make sure that I grip him after the freedom is finished, and as soon as freedom finishes, I'm gonna pet root him into chains of ice. So. Right now, I'm doing a very good job, um, but unfortunately, he connects with my druid, and here he's going to get a full kidney onto my druid. Not much I can do here. I've got no stun, no grip. Uh, he gets him down to half HP in that kidney, which is gross, into a hodge, a half DR hodge, and I'm just trying to get some pressure up on the rogue here. Uh, amazing step there from the rogue. Doesn't My druid tries to juke him, and that's pretty much going to cost him the game. I try to stun him here, but he's still available. He gets bopped out of my stun. They just went all in for this kill. Now, right now, honestly, right now, it looks pretty bad, right? Um, my, my heal is dead, and uh, I'm going to turn this game around. Watch this. All right, so the Paladin, I don't know. He's just a greedy fella. Uh, he decides to just stay, stay here with me and let me just wail on him. I get Apocalypse off. I swap him to the Rogue here. Uh, I had the Paladin on focus. I IBF out of that stun, and now I actually, like, hmm, the Rogue's running away. Let me just stay on the, on the, on the Paladin then. So I just sit here on the Paladin. Um, and I get a, I get a juicy, uh, I don't know what, he just doesn't cast, and then just dies. Absolutely hilarious. Now I swap to the rogue, and it's done, because I've an empowered death strike. He has no evasion to stop the empowered death strike going off, and now I have asphyxiate and a shit ton of runic power. That is GG, guys. So, yeah, I don't know, like, just don't, don't hang around, mate. Like, just leave. Just run away, and... You lost the game. Alright, so here, watch my damage on the warrior at the start. That's one mind flay, by the way. I uh, trinked out of this because I want to see how much damage I can do. And then, boom, gets down to like 1%, I think 5% or 3% HP there. Uh, disgusting. I missed the kick there, unfortunately. Um, and I'm just going to pretty much do the same thing that I did against the other warrior team and stay warrior most of the game and make his life a living hell and kick, get as many kicks as I can on the shaman. Uh, shaman doesn't really play it that well. Uh, again, the, the the like level of players that I'm playing against it, it varies. Like on the first week, you don't know who you're playing against. Could be playing against a, bla a glad first game, and then someone who doesn't really play the, the class that much on the second game. But yeah, the warrior is doing really good damage on my paladin. I get a juicy kick onto the shaman there, and um, yeah, pretty much gets a full rep tier, which is great. That's very, very good, and we use this to get this warrior back down. A mind flay spawn, which is perfect. I stun him directly out of the uh, repentance, and this is really, really, really bad situation for them. He is so lucky, guys. Uh, the link doesn't even connect with him, but he still lives. Uh, IBF here, because I get greedy for the kill, and I obviously get the kill, so huge game there. 
Uh, playing against Ethanol here. <laughs> Ethanol. Uh, Dispriest Rogue. Um, pretty much same thing here. I actually think Dispriest is getting stronger and stronger throughout the expansion. This is when I think this will be the best, because they scale very well with gear. And they're actually a bit annoying to kill, so I like actually going um, on uh, Rogue here. But there's actually a Holy Priest, and I don't know why he prematurely pops... Uh, I got, I'm just going to call them Wings, where it resurrects you down to like higher HP. Um, so yeah, on the on the rogue here, try to grip him down between Loz and uh, now as an unholy death knight, you counter holy priest quite well. Uh, we have so many stops for their greater heals, and honestly, I it's just too easy. And they have to cast; it's a long cast, and it gives you plenty of time to move your pet or get a grip pet stun mind freeze asphyxiate to get to stop it from going off. So we have really good pressure right now. Uh, Rogue is hasn't popped a single defensive here. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I, I mind freeze that greater heal. So now he's spamming uh, flash heals. It gets very low here. Has to c dedicate cloak and evasion. Now that's a bit much and they could have avoided this if they just used their defensives properly but they panicked and um, now they literally have freaking nothing left. But Greater heals are amazing. I get randomly bopped there. I think my healer accidentally used the wrong cooldown on me. It was pretty funny. I think he mentioned it to me after the game. Got one mind flay on the rogue at the moment. And um, yeah, honestly, I'm just going to make sure that I can grip him down here. Uh, which wasn't actually Loz, so a bit unfortunate at that part in there. But yeah, next next CC chain onto this Holy Priest, it's going to be done though. So I have mind freeze available. I want to move the rogue a bit closer to the priest. Um, so now I'm going to get the next, the next cast he actually tries to do, I'm going to get, uh, which is very easy. He tries to juke me there, wings pop, but I've got so much damage, mind flays on him, and he's literally getting smashed by my pets while I'm sitting in a kidney. Uh, this is hilarious. Gets pretty good damage on me here, so I AMS, I grip that heal. Now I have empowered pet to get the next kick on him, which is great. Um, so now he's really in trouble. We have got so many kicks available. Boom, there's one kick. Uh, I'm going to look to Mind Freeze the next. Boom, actually, he tries to juke me. I save my Mind Freeze, and down he goes. So, yeah, just keeping him in range, and just d honestly just using all my kicks and interrupts. All right, so here, Beastmaster Dis Priest. This Beastmaster doesn't do a very good job of getting traps off onto the healer. I'm guessing that's the, the kind of strategy that they're going to do. Uh, I get a Mind Flayer spawn on this guy, and he gets absolutely chunked off this. Uh, while the priest sits a full asphyxiate and he has the penance actually holds on to turtle but they use pain stuff here so this is really good now this beast master needs to stay the heck away from his healer i don't know why he's, he's just so close to his healer all the time it makes my life so easy getting kicks off onto the healer so uh half hodge here on the disc priest and um he's gonna pop beast master uh sorry beast jewel wrath and go ham onto my healer um but he has to turtle here. So we've got paint up turtle. It's pretty much over if we can connect the next CC chain onto this hunter. Down goes the dome. I'm going to pull him out of it and slow him to make sure he doesn't go back in it. But honestly, by this time, we have so much pressure. My paladin gets very low, but just loses away. Uh, I stun the priest so he can't do any damage or fear my, uh, my healer there. And I make my pet move onto the trap, which I heard him drop down there. And honestly, at this point, it's almost over. I have a kick available onto the priest. He uh, feigned deaths here. Uh, I have the next kick available for the priest. And honestly, it's really straightforward game. He turn around and kick him before the hunter dies. So pretty straightforward. Here playing against a fire mage. And I want to say holy priest. Yep, it's a holy priest. So again, fire mages can be quite tricky. The very skilled ones are very good at getting the G-Pies off. And um, holy priest fire mage is actually disgusting because of their ability to mind control uh, the player just before. And then drop it just before the G-Pie hits. And... The, it's just disgusting. Um, you won't see it at this rating though. I get a nice kick here and we're going to get uh, a lot of damage onto him and he just dies there. Uh, I'm actually just going to go back and rewind that because it happened so fast. Uh, this is actually about halfway through the game. I'm uh, sorry, I should add that guys. Um, yeah, he already had uh, cauterized pro uh, proct before, but he had block available. So got a bit greedy there holding on to block and honestly pretty straightforward he goes in for a fear here I, I get feared here but i trinket it and i got so much damage coming out here and um, i get a juicy kick on the greater hill and that's enough to actually seal the deal now i could have actually mind pet i actually do my pet kick there as well and get the kill so mind freeze into pet kick and he had no wings available uh so pretty straightforward win there um yeah, I don't want to show the full game because it was a bit longer than I wanted to. just want to show you guys um, the lead up to the kill. I believe we have a couple of clips left, um, but that was that game. Actually, no, that is the final game, I think, uh, of the... 
Let me just see. But yeah, this is the game that I get rival off, so that pretty much finished it off. And I'll just check here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. So that sums it up. Uh, I tried to fit in as much footage as I could into this video. Didn't want to drag it on too long. Uh, it's a bit longer than I would have liked. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the commentary. If you have any questions about the season so far, I will try to answer them. But I am still testing and learning things uh, as I go. So thank you very much for watching. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter at MFWestWell and give the video a thumbs up. Thank you very much, guys, and stand holy. Peace.